R&B money. When Kobe was playing a Laker game, Snoop is not dealing with music when the Laker game's playing, when mm-hmm. the Laker game's on. And we used to live so far, by the time I get to Snoop's house, the Laker game yeah, had yeah. just started. So yeah. I, and I'm not leaving. Watch the game. Right? And I'm not that much in the sports, but I learned through this, like, yeah, you know. Yeah. When Snoop says, yeah, you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. In the face. Yeah. You put it in your know, face, right? I, yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I, I feel like I want to say, I want to say, I want to say one night the Lakers lost or something like that. And and uh, I just happened to be there with the beats. And, you know, he he would always play in video games. Nate Dogg would be around. And then I remember asking the engineer, shit, uh, play some beats. I'm like, does he mean play pre, pre-existing? Because now I'm I'm trying to listen for the clues. Because I don't want to, because Marlon said, don't, 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 don't pre, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck okay. it up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't want to fuck it up. So I'm yeah. listening for the cues. I'm like, to play the beats. And then the engineer took a little while. And then he just, for some, it must have been God, bro. He just turned to me and said, you got any beats? And I was like, oh. <laughs> And I remember this exact day, he took the beat, said, I said, these are 18 beats. These for you. I made these for, these for, these for you, like, these for you. He probably thought I was weird because I was like, I'm built to work with you. I am... I'm built to work with you. I prayed to work with you at 12. Like, I nah, it's am. all coming out. I, <laughs> so, and, and so he reached, so he like. <laughs> <laughs> so, then he, so then he says, he said, I can do whatever I want with these beats. I said, yeah. He said, these beats are all mine. He said, yeah. He said again, I can do whatever I want with these beats. I said, yeah. And the start of me and his relationship of me by myself without being a ghost keyboard player like I was for mm-hmm. years and a lot of, ma- a lot of ma- ma- major producers. Um. By the time I got, when he said that, it was at the time we also met a young man by the name of Sycamore. And Sycamore at, was really influencing Snoop Dogg back then on doing mixtapes. And Snoop had started this series called the Welcome to the Church series, and it was tearing up the streets of L.A. And the first important series, The Ones, was mainly produced by a young Terrace Martin doing most of the music with wow. a jelly roll and a battle cat. And then he'd say my name. And then I was on the roll with him. So then I start learning. So then I was saying in my head, I said, as I'm on the road, down records, just mixtape records. But I didn't need no money. I didn't, I never, I never, I didn't need no money. I was, I'm just gracious you wrapped on a beat of mine. I didn't need no, I would have, I would have worked, I would have paid you to do this. I don't mm. need no money. I'm just happy you did it. Mm-hmm. And I was on the road and I started doing things like how I got on so many records. I start seeing, you know, most musician behavior on the road with the artists is either they go back, go hang by themselves, some go eat with the guys, some try to hang out, laugh and joke with the artists. I hate those guys. They laugh and joke with the artists, you know. For me, I knew that Snoop stayed in studios in LA, but there was no studio for him on the road. So I convinced the security um, guards, I said, man, can I ride the security bus? And the security was intense. Nobody wants to ride security. I said, man, can me, can me and my friend Kamasi, Kamasi Washington, Kamasi mm-hmm. ride the security bus? Um, Cause I told Snoop, I, man, I'm, I'm gonna bring a studio. But he didn't know I was doing this. So I, t- I lied and told security, yeah, Snoop said it's cool for me to bring the studio. Cause now, now I'm finessing. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. I'm, now I'm knowing, he's a, he don't talk to the security, he's a star. He talks to him, but about security yeah, 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 him. Yeah, he's right. not worried about the studio with these guys. Yeah. So I'm already like, this is what we gonna do. So I, I, I'm like, Snoop said, man, let me get the whole back of the bus. <laughs> So I could, I could, because this is before, this is the inbox. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I still yeah. had to bring a power had, supply yeah. of this keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, no, yeah. it's no soft sense going uh-huh. on. No uh-huh. VSTs right now. Yeah, yeah. So I had that studio on that bus and I just know every, because now that I'm already in with Snoop, I still respected Marlon. Marlon was still with me the whole way. And I said, what should I do now? What should we move? He'd be like, when we get to the next city sound check, you make sure you sit at that keyboard. And whatever song Snoop sing, you better know it. And if he sing a song, you play a song that he know on that keyboard. After that, he gonna be fucking with you. And then tell him, hey, I got a studio on the bus. Let's get out. So I was like, oh shit, this is like some, some other shit. Yeah. 
Cause Snoop would go through the sound checks and do a Blue Magic song and do a Temptation right, song. Right, right. Do he's a he's a walking DJ. So I'd be like, oh, I don't have as many years of music. But at this point, I grew up playing the townhouse, black clubs, black weddings. Like I know all the songs I need to know for a black wedding, a baby shower, uh, anything. I know all the songs. You got the dial up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I know your songs. Yeah. I I know I know the songs. Um. And he starts singing. What song did he start singing? Hold on. An old gospel song. I think it was God Will Take Care of You by the Hawkins. It was some obscure, it was some like esoteric song that you had to have like a Love Alive album right. to know this. And it just so happened. See how God do? He put me right in place. That was. I had just spent a year studying this music with 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 Robert Spud, C. Wright in Dallas, R.C. Williams, Sean Martin. I had just left Dallas for a year studying with all the gospel baddest motherfuckers in the world and knowing all the Hawkins songs. So I was all right when he said, God will take care of you. And the band started playing it and I was like, <sighs> right after that I said, hey, I got a studio on the bus because like, I'm, I'm trying to fuck with you, my nigga. I'm, I'm on the bus. He like, you got a whole studio on the bus? Yep. So he started making that security bus park in the, it was like, I was looking like, a, you know, the whole bus would park so Snoop could get to the studio early, you know, and I, I would be the only engineer on the bus. And that's how we really bonded studio. Then when, when I got back to LA, I would go to his house because I wasn't going to Snoop Dogg for placements. See, that's where everybody got it fucked up. Yeah. I wasn't, my quest wasn't to come out on records with Snoop Dogg. My quest was to be next to him and just figure out what can I learn from him? What can I, how can I learn? I, my, my goal was never how many records I got on Snoop. If that was my goal, I probably would have had a lot more. My goal was to be around and be a service no matter what I was doing for Snoop. Hmm. If Snoop needed the baddest musicians in the world, Thundercat, Robert Glass for this. If Snoop needed that, blah, blah, same thing for Kendrick. It just so happens I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a very good record producer and musician. But if I could just fellowship the vibe, that's my thing, you know. I think that's my gift. Fellowship the vibe. Fellowship the vibe. You know, that's yeah. kind of my thing, man. You know, so I think with Snoop, we we really bonded because he see I I didn't want nothing. You know, I didn't need nothing because I didn't know I I didn't need anything. You know, I, I didn't know nothing about. I was just happy that I had food and I could be traveling the world, and I know damn well this man could do this shit with a fucking a MP3, and they still gonna come. I never will forget the band sounded horrible one night. Cause niggas was being funny. If the band they was being funny, they was being you know when band members get paid a little late, they be little attitudes and shit. Yeah. But but now Snoop he didn't build me. I'm five years in. now. He got me. I care about the whole program now. I'm like, okay, yeah, we gon' uh uh nah. I, Cause I know so many people. When I go back home, they would love this. They would love this. You know. That's when you see Snoop was the first one that had me in the band, Kamasi in the band, Thundercat in the band, Robert Spud C. Wright in the band. Like Snoop is the fucking Billy Eckstein of this shit. And if you know about Billy Eckstein, you know Billy Eckstein had Dizzy Gillespie. Billy Eckstein had Miles Davis, Charlie Parker. Snoop is that. Without, without Snoop in the equation, Los Angeles is nothing musically. Oh.